Hi everybody, Matt back with you, hope you're okay. It's the Sunday before Christmas, hence the snow and the ice and the need of a scarf. Three months ago I filmed here uh, at the start of what was then known as the Adopt a Grave project, because Christchurch had pretty much been left as an abandoned graveyard. And a small group of people came together to start looking after specific graves and returning them to the light, shall we say. What happened was it became a huge community project with much more people, including groups like Incredible Edible, coming in and completely clearing this graveyard. What followed after that was that the owners of Christchurch, that is a private property, there was a, quite a lot of the graveyard space was there as well. And they've also cleared the graveyard. Now I'm not going into their part today, but I'm going to show you what work has gone on here and some of the graves that have been uncovered in the meantime. Like I said, it's quite icy today, uh, so I will be careful walking around. But I think you can see immediately what work has gone on here. The best way of doing it is probably to contrast with the previous video. But as we walk around, you will see some major differences. A grave here that's been uncovered is Mademoiselle Rosalie de Foss, who was a refugee, sadly died just a few weeks after arriving into Todmorden, roughly the end of the First World War. I believe there's two refugee graves in Christchurch. There's been a lot of work gone on down the side next to the school and uh, some admittedly fake grass has been put down but it has tidied it up tremendously. And this works, it works really well. Another thing that's noticeable is the return of flowers to the headstones. Some of these probably haven't had head, uh, flowers next to them, maybe even for a century. On this grave here, I'm going to point out Edna Eastwood, who was from Cambridge Street. Uh, she caused quite a stir in 1912 uh, when she disappeared and uh, was never seen well, for months. It was quite big newspaper headlines at the time. Uh, sadly, she was found drowned in the end, but it was quite a big um, story, a disappearance. Might be a story I can cover in more depth another day. Okay, I found the other Belgian refugee, Mademoiselle Van Hoy. So then we reach an area that's had a lot of work done on it, um, the crypt area, and yeah, obviously there's still a lot of work to be done here, but uh, there's been the removal of quite a number of uh, trees and things that were um, doing all the damage here. Some of the gravestones are actually shattered and broken. Um, but again, if you look on the video, previous video, to what this looked like, you would imagine that this would be lost forever. How wonderful to see the angel in all its glory. Funnily enough, I don't know who this belongs to. Uh, I can make it out. Christian Stephen. It's a little bit worn, unfortunately. The work that must have gone into some of these is like a an art, isn't it? I mean, look at these Celtic crosses. They are just beautiful. To think they've been hidden all this time. 
This is an example of uh, the damage that the uh, trees was doing. I mean, it's absolutely shattered this uh, grave, unfortunately. Possibly able to be mended one day. Another example is this one. On this one there's a mention of a Charles Hayworth. It says at the bottom, 18 years, a bell ringer of this church. That's this one. On this one we have uh, Peter Ratcliffe who owned, uh, was the landlord, sorry, of the Black Swan, uh, which is now the Polished Knob. And over here, more landlords. This one is, on here we have John Ratcliffe somewhere. John, who was the landlord of the Golden Lion. A long time ago. This one, a famous name for Todmorden, uh, is... Abraham Ormerod, um, where Aldi is now, was the former Abraham Ormerod Medical Centre, uh, which of course became a little bit notorious uh, for being one of the practices of Dr. Harold Shipman. However, the building was quite nice. I've got to say, probably a little bit better than uh, Aldi. None of these could have been seen three months ago. This was all bushes, trees and foliage. And this side was a mass of brambles. Look at it now. I covered James Ellsworth on a previous video. Another landlord, this one of the Railway Hotel. Not the American wrestler. This one has still got some you can see how high up the uh, trees were. Uh, these were totally covered. Now this tomb here, unfortunately I can't quite make out the names on it. But I believe one of the occupants of this um, tomb um, provided the bells for the church at one point. I think the bells have now been moved elsewhere. Sorry, I can't quite remember this bit. This is one of the graves I adopted. This one is the one I've chosen. My uh, two children have chosen another. Belongs to the Howarth family. Still needs some work doing on it, but obviously not today. It has missed its uh, the end of it here. So just to put a few faces and places to things we've talked about already. Uh, this is a photo of Edna Eastwood uh, that was used to, uh, you know, as a kind of have you seen this woman kind of picture. Again, I think I'll cover her story in more depth on a separate video. The landlords we were talking about, for example, Peter Ratcliffe of the Black Swan. This is him. And the grave with John Ratcliffe on it, who passed away at the Golden Lion. Here's a photo of John. And I should have pointed out on that same gravestone at the bottom, there's a mention of an Anne Ratcliffe, who died at 104 years of age, and she was, at, certainly at the time, Tobinan's oldest resident. There she is at the front of this picture either for a 90th or a 100th birthday. The Abraham Ormerod Medical Centre is this picture, which was built on the site of the former Ridgefoot Mill. A lot of us remember it looked like this for a good chunk of time, though. For some reason, it used to have knickers on a washing line outside it. Can't remember why. If it had still been around today, it would certainly have been uh, 
on a number of urban explorers' hit lists, especially with the uh, Dr. Death, Harold Shipman link. And the grave I showed you with Abraham Omrod's name on it, it's actually the tomb next to it uh, that houses the Abraham Omrod that's linked with this medical centre. Unfortunately, I couldn't see it with the snow, but they are right next to each other. So again, absolutely none of this was accessible a few months ago. And look at it now. Amazing. Again, it's a shame this one is damaged. It would have been very impressive with the, these still being on top of it, but these things happen. Now, obviously what is unfortunate here is that the snow and the ice have been sitting on a lot of these uh, all week. So I can't show you any of these, but again, lots of hard work has meant that these have reappeared. And I think this gravestone, still looking like this, is a fabulous example of how things changed because I would say all the gravestones here, this entire block, looked like this. Including the one that I did, but you can see where they've been and what damage has unfortunately been done due to that neglect. sure whose gravestone this is but it's one of very few left uh, that need uncovering maybe you could adopt this one this tiny little gravestone was completely lost it belongs to Catherine Molesworth who died in 1870 age just four and Francis Molesworth age five somebody's now looking after you again Sometimes people couldn't afford full gravestones, and so they may well be buried in unmarked graves, but quite often, and certainly in this grave, come across little things like this with just initials on. There might be two or three people in here, those initials might not actually belong to the people who are in it. It's just, um, seems to be how it is, it could be who, be who the plot belongs to. Uh, but yes, yeah, quite a few of these. This one is James and Nellie Weatherill, which again is a name quite synonymous with an event here, not these particular two, but it is the uh, parents of the uh, murderer of the vicarage, which again is another story I've covered. You might be able to look through the videos and find that if you're interested. Um, unfortunately some of the gravestones are not in the best places. Uh, yeah, not sure why they would build a wall on top of them but anyway maybe one day they can be recovered. Heading up to the top end of the graveyard now and you can see the fence uh, that goes around the church and again fair play to the owners of the church it is lived in so please don't go in there if you visit but all these were covered up as well and they've worked hard to recover these gravestones Another one that I uncovered, though I've not adopted it, is this one. Um, it was well covered up at some point. Um, can't show you it by name. But there's another landlady in here. Unfortunately, I don't remember her name, but there we go.
This was the last part of the uh, graveyard to have its trees cleared uh, and my girls adopted this little cross here which was inaccessible to about here to that tree with brambles and we did what we could and then Incredible Edible came along and uh, cleared the rest of it for them this is, uh, belongs to the Dewursts It's a bit of an ice skate rink today See again, there's still a lot of work to be done on rescuing some of these. But they're still in a better place than they were. See how weathered some of these are as well. That's unreadable, unfortunately. One thing that has been interesting is seeing names of streets and places uh, that are lost to time. Sometimes I don't know exactly where those places are anymore. For example, this one here. Where is Mechanic Street? Top section of the graveyard here, I think it's called the Peace Garden. Uh, this is still in use up here, you can't quite see again because of the ice, but these are squares with names on. You see by the number of flowers here, it's still in use. Just an interesting little feature to finish off at the back of the church, up some steps. There is the remains of believe this is known as the Holy Well. Again, if I'm wrong, you can correct me. So there we go. Sadly there's no way I can cover all the stories of these people uh, and some of them are still being uh, researched and their stories brought back into existence and into the light. But in terms of a project, again if you go back three months to the previous video, what a huge difference. We can pretty much get to every part of a graveyard now and see uh, who and what is here. And I think that's all credit to the people who set up the idea in the first place, the Adopt a Grave project, and all the people who decided that they wanted to see this graveyard back, not in use, back as a place that can be visited and its history revisited for the future, if that makes sense. So, well done everybody. I believe a similar project has just started at Crossstone Graveyard as well. And I think there is still the option of adopting a grave. Not every gravestone here has been adopted yet. So get on the Friend of Christ Church in Todmorden Facebook page, or Todmorden Past and Present. You'll find all the information there on what future things are going to happen at the graveyard. See you soon.